Good morning. Um, thank you all for coming in. I'd like to call the uh, facility committee meeting to order, noting that all board members are here as well as um, administration and some of our subcontractors. Um, I need approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. I have received no public comments. Rebecca, help me. So we are going to be talking about uh, the last list of our subcontractors for Heritage Elementary, and Rich is here to help us kind of talk through this list. Yes, we are getting down there. Um, there are three for your consideration here this morning, all having to do with site improvements. Those are the uh, permanent fencing, uh, which would include the ornamental fence throughout the project, um, along with some backstop. Uh, athletic backstop, and then also some vinyl chain link coated around the playground area. Uh, asphalt paving, uh, relatively self-explanatory paving at um, not only the bike bike paths, but also a uh, parking lot. And then the concrete curb and gutter um, for your parking lot islands, uh, roadways, that type of thing. So uh, those are the three uh, that we're putting in front of you this morning. And I would like to also just add that uh, if this is the right time, I guess we are, we did uh, receive additional bids for um, the synthetic play surface. That's uh, the, both the poured in place rubber and like the actual artificial turf, they actually kind of marry up in that playground area and at the courtyard. Um, I did ask for, an opportunity to go in front of the full board next Monday evening uh, to present and make a recommendation on that front. Um, there was just some additional information that the civil engineer and architect needed to get to us so that we could provide like apples to apples bids so everybody kind of was bidding, not kind of, so that everything, everybody was bidding the same, same scope kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so these are the three in front of you, and then there'll be another one that I bring forward next Monday if that's explained adequately, Steve, I guess. Yeah, and then Rich, can you talk a little bit about at the last regular monthly board meeting, you and Jay were here to talk about the guarantee maximum price and preventing that, and how do these numbers intersect with the guaranteed maximum price, the numbers that they're seeing here? Um. Well, the budgeted numbers, um, these are the numbers, I'm not sure that I'm following your question, but the, the budgeted numbers were um, at the end of the day, what was reflected in the GMP and then our bids actually came in. Um, one was one was a little bit higher and then the other two uh, came in a little bit lower than. So at the end of the day, um, whatever savings, are achieved based on what we budgeted would go into like the CM contingency. And so what we're referring to is we reached an agreement with Vogel on the guaranteed maximum price, but that was before you saw this. So Rich put that budget column as a placeholder for those. Right. And then ultimately we would, uh, if these are approved by the board, then these would just be adjusted to the low bid number instead. Correct. But everything else was already known by the last regular board meeting, except these three and then the playground. So I guess where's the uh, fencing? Is that just around the uh, exterior? It's a great question, Jack. So there's actually fencing that runs in the north south direction that, um, like almost the entire length of the school. And part of that is to um keep it kind of separates the bus loop road from that entrance into area e which is the early childhood and kindergarten so it's a little bit of additional security measures there and then that kind of continues up to the north um not so much in as like securing anything just kind of continue that look of continuity for that ornamental fence and then um there's also black vinyl chain link like at the back side of the playground where it would catch any basketballs that are thrown, you know, or shot or miss the target, so to speak. And that'll keep them from meandering way down south. 
And then there's also uh, a new baseball field or athletic field at the very southern portion of the project um, that will get a new like 24 foot high backstop at the back side of it. So there's some ornamental, there's some black vinyl chain coated, and then there's the higher backstop. What, what kind of ornamental? Is this wood? Or is uh, no, it's um, chain link. It's yeah. post and then uh, post and then it's got um, the the picket style. I, I, um, how do I describe it? It's like the one inch square like pickets. That's the ornamental feature that was with a top rail, bottom rail, and intermittent posts. Yeah, plastic or wood? Or? Uh, no, it'll be metal. No metal, yes. Does that softball field just for playground use or? I believe it would just be for playground, playground. use. Yes. Yeah. Similarly to the one behind intermediate school, I believe it's just playground yes. use at this, at this time. All right. Any other questions? I guess just going forward, uh, you know, uh, as we look at these bids, you, you know, I know it, this is simple for you. Yeah. You know, as far as putting it together, but it would be. Uh, kind of interesting to uh, see what the other contractors are, similar to what we had when we started this. Okay. Uh, you know, because it gives us a flavor of, of who's working on the or who's pursuing these projects, I think. Uh, Jack's referring to earlier on when we were doing like one of these at a time. Rich took a different approach to show you like all of those that did. And as we got into some of the months where there were so many of these at once, we shifted to putting together a low bid document, but um, we could certainly, as we look at like the middle school, kind of shift our thinking back to like showing you the version so you can see who's all put in the bids. It's easy for Rich to do. Yep. He's just giving us the format that we thought would be easier based on how many of them we were bringing forward. Just trying to pair it down with it. I appreciate that. So, yeah, I think absolutely to, to expose like the level of engagement would be a pretty straightforward exercise, Jack. Absolutely. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Um, next, the uh, review of the solar system options. So I'll take that, Joan. So at last month's facility committee meeting, this committee made a recommendation to the full board to work with Westfall as a partner on these energy service type uh, projects. The full board then approved Westfall in the packet last month, we had an example solar system, but we mentioned we were not asking to actually have an approval of that. It was just done for illustrative purposes. Uh, since then, John and I have been working with Westfall and we asked them to prepare a range of options uh, to get the conversation started. Uh, so they provided us with that attachment. I know it didn't come till later on the day on Friday. Uh, we're not necessarily asking anyone to feel like you have to make a decision on this today. We're more interested in just what kind of feedback do you have? What kind of questions do you have? But in the document that they provided us, Rebecca, if you wouldn't mind opening it up, uh, if you want to go past this page. Uh, so there's a range of options. You can see there at the top, they're showing three different system sizes for heritage and a range of cost options. And then if you want to scroll through Rebecca to the next page, I can keep going. So right there would be great. So for each of the options, they're sharing some information with us that's just important for us to be aware of and think through. Uh, the first one is at the very bottom, of the table, you see return on investment. I mean, that's typically very important to a board as you're making decisions about, you know, investing funds in a project like this. Uh, so this size system, the, the lowest cost system that they're proposing has a 14 year return on investment. 
I think it's important to just know we have numerous projects throughout the district that would have much better return on investments in 14 years. Um, examples of that would be classroom lighting at like Prairie Arboretum, some of our other facilities. Uh, so we just want to make sure we're keeping that big picture in mind and that uh, solar projects today are still important from like an educational perspective and long-term uh, energy efficiency, but they're still not what you would call strong return on investments. Uh, and so this one has a 14 year. I also want to call your attention to underneath the total system price, Westfall is identifying some of the incentives that could be available for these type of systems. The large one, that's this where Rebecca's got the mouse on each of the of the three systems is actually a federal incentive that is associated to the infrastructure bill that President Biden signed like maybe a year, year and a half ago. Uh, they're identifying what they believe would be possible through that rebate. That's not a for sure. Uh, we would have to apply and we'd have to try to get in line with basically every other public entity in the country that's putting in for infrastructure work. So just keep in mind that under no circumstances is that a, yes, we're gonna get $81,000 back against the 327, that's a possibility. The Wisconsin program, the focus on energy and seven is certainly more of a known program. It's one that we feel uh, is, a, is a very solid opportunity for us to put in for. And then there's another program that I'm not familiar with that they're referencing that has a $20,000 potential return. I think it's important to look at this as knowing that administratively, we will pursue all rebate options that are out there, federal, state, or local, but you don't really want to bank on them. And you really want to look at the 327 and know, okay, that's what we know we'd have to pay. Administratively, we're going to go after whatever rebates we can get. Uh, and then keeping your eye on that return on investment. And then the next couple of pages really show larger systems. Uh, it goes up to a system that has a $500,000 cost. You want to keep going, Rebecca? Um, this is one that that base system is 510. This is the system they used in the proposal previously to show you what a sample solar system would look like. Uh, we actually put $500,000 into the budget that you saw last month. Uh, and so there, we took that off of here. Uh, but again, it doesn't mean we have to spend 500000 on a solar system. We just threw it in there as a possibility. So this is another size system. And then the largest one is attached. Uh, go ahead, Jack. What's the useful life? And uh, what's the uh, maintenance cost? So we're having some of our first maintenance costs on the intermediate school system right now. John, would you mind come up and talk a little bit about that and what you're running into? So like any piece of electronics, there, there's care and feed. There's really not feeding, just care, uh, obviously monitoring the system. But the system at intermediate has been up and running really without maintenance, the, the solar panels themselves stay clean, the electronics stay running, the inverter stays up and running. We did lose some controllers on the roof, uh, just some pieces of electronics that went out of service. It didn't, it basically um, turned off a couple of random solar panels. So there is some monitoring that has to be done with the solar panels. Um, is that automatic? Uh, so that if they go out, you get a signal and say the panel three is done. So currently, we have to go into the monitoring system to look at it or go upstairs to the penthouse to look at it. And that's how we discovered it. So, um, from what I viewed on the charts and the electrical output from the solar panels themselves, it, it didn't seem like we lost the power. I think it was just a controlling mechanism. 
for part of the reporting. It's basically the controller for the panels, uh, but they're continuing to create a PC. So, so, so it's minimal maintenance uh, going forward. Those things have been up for what, four years now? Two years? Since 2015. So, so, uh, minimal. so there's an old panel at the intermediate school out back that still works today and that's over 20 years old. Old heritage. Yeah, old heritage. Yeah. I guess the other thing that uh, would interest me is uh, what is the uh, cost of electricity? Because this, all these numbers here are based on today's cost. So uh, it would be interesting to understand what the trend oh, sure. for uh, electricity is. You know, because uh, you know if you could project those forward, because it's not controlled down, right? Yep. Uh, you know, it would it would make these uh, payback numbers probably. Uh, more interest, making the assumption that, you know, electricity is going to go up 2% or whatever that percentage is on an annual basis. It probably made these uh, numbers look different. Yeah, I'm not sure if they include the, in, an inflator or future energy costs or not. Yeah, so we'll reach back out to get confirmation on these exact panels and what they would expect the life cycle to be and their calculations. Are they it, are they increasing the cost of electricity over time in that calculation, or are they not? Right. Um, other thoughts or questions? Steve, are these three examples, is the solar the same technology? Is it just more panels? Just more panels. More right. panels. So the technology is the same consistent. From what I know, yeah. And just to follow up again on your question, Jack, the Controllers that are out of service now, they're on, they, there's lifetime warranty for those devices, so they'll be replaced for free. We'll just have a service call from our electrician. What do we currently do at the intermediate school? We, we have, so this, if you scroll up just a half of line there, you can see 367 kilowatt system. At the new intermediate school, we have a 19.6 kilowatt system, so it's tiny compared to this. Um, so the amount of energy that we're actually gaining from solar at the intermediate school does not offset the amount of energy used, which is reflected by the red bars. Mm -hmm. It's minuscule. And like, if there's a live graph, it's pretty cool to look at it. But the amount of solar offset in the yellow there is significant compared to the little 19.6K system we have right now. So this is giving us a lot of energy back compared to our current system. But you paid for it, you paid for it, so. Yeah. Any other questions? I guess the other thing too, it would be, okay, if we went with this uh, system that they've got here, uh, if you wanted to put more panels on, you know, if we wanted to go up to the next size, you know, what would happen, right? Probably need a bigger inverter uh, panels. Things like that. It would be interesting to understand that. And Rich, can you talk about the roof structure and how that works for solar and like what you would need in order to expand? Yeah, basically, what we would need um, the roof. These these would sit. These panels would sit on top of the roof um, with some type of slip sheet. Um, but we would basically just need, and it's nice that. I guess in one respect, it's nice that you're engaged with West Ball in that there are electrician on the project. And so if there was any consideration for expansion, it would just be about providing like raceways or empty conduits up to the roof that are properly sleeved and, and, and flashed around um, by our roofer um, in order to add panels and then make those future provisions. We would, we would be forward thinking and, and set it up with that rough in infrastructure in place so that we didn't have to tear into the roof, you know, that type of thing. Um, we would put those provisions in place ahead of time. And if you're doing that now, it's a lot uh, cheaper. Than Without it. question, Jack. Yeah. You know, yes. So, so if you think about it, uh, this is the way of the future. Um, electricity is going to continue to go up. I don't know, everybody's buying electric cars. Or so I think I, I think we got to at least take a look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so that uh, if you want to answer you can. So the other thing is, we, so sorry, just to say, we can ask that question in addition to the other two is what would the investment be? Let's say we were to go with the, the smaller system of these three or even something smaller, we can ask what would that investment look like to have the infrastructure in place to go to the second or third system if we wanted to in the future. Yeah, or maybe it's a matter of putting in upsize the uh, inverter right now and wait for the uh, solar panels in the future. Or you're just prepping the system, you know, with, with the uh, major major components. What what are our peers doing when they build it? Like, what did the forest do that we're using solar or Verona when they built the new high school? Or so that would be something we'd have to look into, okay. which we can definitely do. And we can definitely look into what some of the newer buildings in the region have done for sizes of systems. Mm -hmm. uh, they did show you what they've done in the Nona Grove, which was, they say it was one of the largest public school solar systems in the state. But we can look at an actual newer school like Verona or like the forest and get information on what kind of system they put in, which would give us some good perspective. Mm -hmm. So we can work on that too. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure your time frame for this meeting or agenda, but we could we could pull up our area now if that's not something you guys want to see. What what is area now? It shows all the schools in our Dane in the Dane County area that and you can click right into it. Like this one again shows a kilowatt right at the top. Can't see it, but three three sixty seven. This she scrolled up with the tab. So well, why don't we pull that off for them for the next meeting when we get okay. answers to the other questions? Can do a comparison that way. Then. Any other questions anybody might have that you would want us to get answers on for coming back? Okay, thank you. Appreciate your feedback. So we won't ask for a recommendation for the next board meeting, but we will go back and get some further information on these questions and then bring it back to the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Next um, on capital projects, looking at first one, which is the maintenance on the track. So yeah, so we have, two specific projects that we want to talk about. But first, I'm going to ask Rebecca to pull up that tracking spreadsheet so you can see oh, I get that. Yep. where we're at, like at a, at a high level, if you wouldn't mind making it a little bigger, Rebecca. So we worked with the facility committee previously to come up with a format to continue tracking these for them as we move forward so you always have a sense of where we are. Uh, and I wanted to just cover one thing for you at the top. So when you look at the top and you see the line that says 8-14-2023, what I'm referencing there, and again, this is just for you to see what would be possible in the way that we're setting this up. That 1,120,000 that I've added in to the maintenance tracking summary was the savings from Heritage Elementary School that were pulled out from the presentation you saw last month. So with the guaranteed maximum price that we agreed to with Vogel and the total budget for Heritage, which included the district cost for furniture, solar, et cetera, there was $1,120,000 that was no longer being allocated towards Heritage. We talked a little bit at the retreat this summer uh, under the way that the referendum question was written for the public, the board would have the ability to, as an example, make a decision to move funds not needed from one project to another. And this would be what that would look like if the board goes in that direction. There are other options available to the board as well a good example would be not borrowing that 1,120,000. So that could happen as well, right? When we get to the next round of borrowing, a board member might say, let's not borrow the whole 175 because we didn't need 1.1 million. 
it really would come down to as board members whether or not you feel that there are projects that should be completed while we have the funds as opposed to then waiting for another referendum and asking the public for funds to do the same projects you do now. So I wanted you to see that this is what this could look like. Uh, we are not recommending at this point asking the board for a decision because we would not be asking to spend those funds at this point in time. But I just wanted to put it somewhere because it's no longer sitting in Heritage. We pulled it off the Heritage budget. So, so Steve, we're, uh, you know, as you look at the municipal campus space, uh, where do you see them? Do they flatline or do they they're, out? Yeah, that's a great question. So back to when the referendum was approved, we immediately went out to market because uh, we knew interest rate increases were coming. We locked in 10 million right away and then 100 million right away. Uh, so we also have spending requirements that come with that hundred million. That means that we're in a position where we're going to have the funds we need until next summer. So until we get to next summer, we're not really able to have a discussion about borrowing more because we have to get the first chunk spent. But then once we get to that point, rates did increase municipal rates did increase after we secured our first borrowings uh generally a half to 0.75 is the fed raised rates and then it's been fairly stable um, the fed is expected to raise rates potentially one more time this fall and then most folks are predicting a longer period of stability at that point uh, which again might make sense for the board to do a temporary borrowing for the remainder of the funds to get it out to a point in which rates start coming back down again. Uh, so then we're tracking on here everything that's been approved by the board, which then leaves a funds available total. So the funds available total is just something for you to keep in mind as other projects are being presented. Um, some of the larger projects that we intend to present to you over time will be uh, LED whole building lighting projects at Lake Prairie, Arboretum, and again, potentially some work at the middle school, clock bell and PA systems at the middle school, uh, Arboretum, and the high school, uh, maintenance work at the high school, a lot of lighting, uh, hallway work, et cetera. So we're going to be presenting you with some larger projects that would be aligned with the funds available here. But for now, uh, we're in really good shape. And ultimately, as we move forward, I think the biggest decision that this committee and then ultimately the board is going to make is, do you want to continue shifting funds towards maintenance as they free up? Because uh, another good example is the GMP that you saw for Heritage last month included off the top of my head like $2.4 million in contingency or something like that. Yeah, $2,630 million. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, so just right off, the top. right off the top. So <laughs> the, the point is everyone working together at Heritage is committed to doing the best we can to utilize those contingency dollars uh, only when necessary. So the expectation is by this time next year, we would be able to tell you we're wrapping up heritage and we've got almost everything taken care of, the school's ready to be open, and we could shift X amount more over to here. And then the discussion will continue with the middle school. So the point that I'm making is at some point, the board is gonna to have to weigh in on what's your perspective on that topic of funds being freed up and being shifted over to here. With that as the background, we have two projects in front of you today that we're looking for feedback on. Um, the first one is the uh, softball field. So coming out of the Rettler report, which you had a chance to see last month, there were some unknowns with some of the additional field improvements that Rettler included in their report. 
we didn't have their report in time to be able to work with someone like a Vogel to give us some cost estimates. Uh, in the last month, we've had an opportunity to do that. So we're going to ask Rebecca to bring up that the budget one, the second one, Rebecca. And just want to be clear with what this is. This was Vogel's uh, review to give to give you a high level budget. Ultimately, if you want to proceed, as an example, when you talk about the press box, call it the storage facility stores area, whatever you want to call it, it has to be designed. So Vogel's been very clear that in order to build something like that, you have to have state approved plans and someone has to design it. So even if you were to say today, let's have Vogel do that for 158, Vogel's gonna say, we can, but we have to first have someone get a plan approved before we can actually build it. So, but they know enough about looking at the one that we have and what costs are today for all of these items to be able to tell you in general, this is what it would take to do these things. Now, I just want to point out a couple things. Like if you look at the Rattler report, it didn't say the fences are about to fall down and have to be replaced right now. It said the fences should be replaced in the near future. So because of that, we put it in and we gave you a price. So if you wanted to be comfortable with some type of budget figure for the varsity softball field, we can prioritize. And as an example, the fences aren't as important as the batting cages. Right? There's a fence that's there right now, but the batting cages would need to be built. So if we had to choose between the two, we would choose batting cages over the outfield fence. So we have the ability to prioritize, but we wanted you to see these numbers. I did put in the notes, there's a couple of things we could do to move ahead. You could ask us to have the design completed for this work. Uh, that's going to be a five to ten thousand dollar cost with Rattler to go ahead and just get it designed, which would then allow Vogel to actually put in more complete numbers. Uh, another thing you could do is like at Warrior Stadium, you wanted to see the project start moving, so you approved a do not exceed dollar amount and said administration get going on it. I mean that's another route. Um, either way, we just wanted to get this information in front of you, you know, prompt your thinking. Next year, we can answer any questions about the conversations he's had with, so, with parents and everything about the actual field and the, and the booster group. So next year, if you have questions, I know Rich can speak to the cost aspect of it as well. So, so I guess, is uh, any of the stuff that uh, is on the uh, varsity we're talking about moving the varsity to the uh, JV. Yep. Right. So, is there anything that's movable from varsity to uh, the JV field? Um, also, I think, you know, as we uh, worked with the uh, baseball, there was some fundraising that went on. Uh, is there still discussion on, you know, on some of that fundraising? Because we're you know talking about being fair, right? I believe. Yeah. And so two programs. Why don't we start with Nick and your perspective on moving anything? I, I'm not sure if there is anything that could be moved, but I don't know if you've had a chance to think about that at all. Yeah, but I'll start with the batting cage. So the existing batting cage that's at the varsity field right now was I'm not sure how old it is, but it was made by Ambus Manufacturing, where the nets that are being ordered for this don't fit because it is a custom you know, design or option that was made many years ago. So even the way it exists right now isn't functional where there's space basically um, from the ground to a certain point where balls are going under it and defeating the purpose of what the cage is there. Sure. So that wouldn't move. Um, the thing that uh, Jay said when we looked at the dugouts was that the dugouts are actually very solid at the JV field so you wouldn't move 
blocks or blocks that are already existing with the varsity field over to the metal dugouts that exist in the JV field. So um, as far as the press box goes, I, I don't yeah. want to build that. No, you can. So those would be like the two items. And I would say if it was like a brand new cage, something more non-custom, some more uniform, then maybe you look at what we have, but not, not given the fact that it's not really functioning right now as it is. I think just to tack on to Jack's question, um, I think it would be good to get better clarification of what our process is in terms of facility improvements just in general for athletics so that we have a consistent process across the board and you know how it's being funded, how we're budgeting, how we're prioritizing, things of that nature. Because I think as we all know there's projects across the district that we're, you know, we're to work with and how who's gonna pay for what, that kind of thing. I think just like our uh and we talked about this like uh four or five years ago, uh having a long range athletic plan, you know, what do we need to do so that we can start looking at that? How do we make those investments? You know, it, it seems like uh you know things come to the board and it's just one group says, Hey, I want this. The next thing you know, we, we're making a decision on that one group, you know, what do we want our athletic facility to look like, you know, over the long range so that, you know, at least we know what kind of costs are coming on booster clubs and parents, and everybody know that, hey, you know, we're not going to make that investment today, but this is where it's going. You know, similar to what we've got in the buildings. Yeah. I mean, certainly one option as we continue to work on this could be to have Rettler design those improvements. And again, that's just the design part of it. It's not actually agreeing to do any of that right now. But then as our discussions progress, that would be ready. So as an example, Vogel would get to the actual state approved plans, which we will need to do anyways, and could then further give you a dialed in price on what it would take to do that. Uh, the batting cages as well, actually design them properly so we would know exactly where they would go. So for an upfront, much smaller investment, the design work could continue while we work through some of these other aspects. Uh, would be one approach that you could recommend to the board if you wanted to move it forward, at least to keep the work moving. Um, or if you would like us to, again, have some of those further discussions. Again, this is your first chance seeing, you know, what this could potentially look like. Uh, you know, Nick and John, we're only seeing some of this for the first time this last week. So we certainly could take more time to answer some of your questions and take a closer look at it. But we wanted to keep the conversation moving. Um, so I guess at this point, just would be looking for feedback on whether you wanted to recommend, you know, continuing to at least design and going from there, or whether you just wanted this to be an informational item that's just looking for feedback. So the time frame would be the 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 girls are going to be playing softball on this field as a varsity field this coming up season in the spring. Is that so? The lights have been ordered, right? Based on the last board recommendation, the design is occurring, and we have the price on the lights, and so all of that is going. Okay. And the intent is to have the lights installed this fall on that field. On that field, and I really feel we should proceed with at least the design yeah. portion. We need to keep that moving and provide an adequate field, especially if there are components that are adequate. But I think if uh, if they plan on it, you know, move forward uh, with the uh, design, it's not done by spring plan yeah. right. the old field for the one year. Right. You know, obviously it's not ideal, but you know, it's, it's moving forward. I think the, probably the, again, I'll let Nick tell me if I'm 
not saying this the right way, but I think the batting cage is probably the most critical piece. Like the fence is already there, right? It's just not the best fence. We can work around a press box, <laughs> but I think the athletes would need at least one high quality batting cage, I think is probably the one thing we would shoot for. I don't want to make you have anything. Yeah, the places that don't have cages, that's definitely a risk to be involved with, you know, sitting there in the chair, whatever. Um, but I don't think an option either is to cross the street every time you want to warm somebody up and put you there. That's mm -hmm. right from an existing cage that sits at the varsity field. That's you're, you're delaying the game in essence to cross somebody across the street to use that. So um, I I agree with what Steve's saying. I think at least one service for cage to warm up the troops is necessary. That could be negotiated on how which team is using it right away when we have a uh, visiting team here. Things like that. It's understood that there's construction that's going on and what the fluidity is needed for sure. So, so I think the getting at least the design put you in a situation where you would be able to if you wanted to try to approve at least something like that which would definitely improve the experience next spring so motion to bring um to move forward with the design portion of this and to bring that to the board second all in favor say on thank you um, next, the high school signage. So definitely Nick will be able to speak to this more than I will, but I'll just kind of give you the background. Um, and before Nick started, Annie had been working on this because the fact that the signs in both the, I'll call it the old entrance to the high school and the new entrance to the high school are, are not ideal. Um, the one at the old entrance to the high school is quite dated and has been there for a long time. The one at the new entrance to the high school does not have modern technology to allow like Nick from his office to go in and program it and say X game tonight. It just, it was, it's too old. It just doesn't function that way. And now there has been some further issues where it's not functioning properly at all. Yeah, so well, go ahead, Nick. It was uh, congratulating seniors up until like a week ago, which I'm starting to get the phone calls out, of course. It wasn't for lack of trying. Uh, I would say it's probably the width of the laptop is the scoreboard controller. It's literally like what you use at a volleyball game um, to control that one on Highway Q. I don't know at what point, but at some point the antenna was snapped off too, which wouldn't have increased its range a whole lot, but. Uh, from what I was told is Aaron would literally sit in his car uh, next to the scoreboard and program that every Monday morning. So we would update it. It's very, it's like, uh, you know, the old cell phones, when they first came out, we'd have to use T9 or whatever to type. Like, that's what it was to get messages into the system. Um, Talked to Mike uh, Darwin, the electrician for the district, and had him look at the control panel because it wasn't sending the signal at all. So that anything I typed in, it wouldn't update. And uh, he said, I've replaced the motherboard on this a couple of times, and that seems to be where the problem is again. And so he still hasn't been able to fix it, which is why the sign is off <laughs> right now. So that that old uh, voice of the cross, senior congratulations message isn't up there anymore. So we're kind of sitting idle because there's no way to send a message or update the sign. Um, and whether it's an issue right now in the sign itself or in the controller, it seems to be a little bit of both. It seems to be every other year or something that's going wrong on that one of the two pieces of equipment. So what you're doing is looking to uh, replace or an update to 21,000? So we have in here uh, a quote for the Century Avenue one, which is the one Nick's referring to. That's 13.5. And then there are two quotes for the older entrance to the high school and then there's pictures in there as well one is a non-electronic sign so it's just replacing the one that's there with a more modern looking you know entrance to the old entrance to the high school sign that's eight thousand and then there's an electronic option as well that would be twenty one thousand and my understanding nick is that would allow you to do both at the same time yeah 
Yeah, the sign that's existing right now in Q, you, you missed it maybe by a year where that technology came in where you could sit at a laptop or sit at a computer and basically pre-program messages in there uh, remotely. I will say something that I don't know, because these are mostly images, um, is you have a lot of burnt out balloons on Highway Q as well. And the cost of those to replace the amount that you have would almost equal a brand new sign because of the older technology that exists. They're not bulbs, but they're, uh, I'm not excited enough to know exactly what they are, but that's part of the issue too. It's not just, hey, we can't remotely do this. Let's change the sign out. It's this picture shows half that almost missing, but there's chunks that are missing. Um, in different so spots. what you would do is take this out with new technologies and uh, and what you're asking for for both electronic signs is uh, forty two thousand dollars or thirty five thousand dollars. Is that is that what you're asking for? If you want to do both electronic, if you if you want to save some costs, that one could be electronic, and the other one could just be an updated sign. The other one, the other one go is out there and have something to do with. Just so this is mean, what it could look like in a non in a non electronic format. But if you wanted it to be messages for the public on both sides, so to speak, there's a electronic version as well. So what's the traffic there? Is other than people coming to right? It seems like they've already decided to come. Yeah. On South Street, I don't necessarily think they need an electronic. Board on South Street. I don't hear them. And on the one on uh, Century, how many different events can you put on them? Is it big enough? Or I mean, sometimes we have three things. Oh, yeah. Can you put off yeah. for that? Well, you can put off these 12 or 15. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. And is it common practice for schools to have an electronic board? Like the high schools, they have that. Is that yeah, it? Um, it. Is. Okay. So yeah, another option is to do electronic here and the eight thousand dollar one. So it would, right. which is much more cost effective than the electronic version in, in the old entrance. So that would be another way to look at it. So I guess the uh, motion would be uh, updating the electronic down the queue and uh, standard in the cell phone sound stream. Is there a second for that? Yeah. Second. Um, we'll work. Yeah, I, and I promise I didn't come in and try and ask for new signs. Like it just it, it didn't work. I was told that Aaron had fixed or Aaron had programmed. You broke them already. <laughs> but I would sit out there, and people would be waving me. I'm like, no, I'm trying to fix it. How long have you been here? Right. <laughs> Okay, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in today. Right. Yep.